All right, so we're back. Of course, talk about some Final Fantasy VII. And my dudes, we have some important shit to talk about today. So randomly, like last night or early this morning, there was a bunch of Japanese interviews and articles that went out in regards to Crisis Core Reunion, but also FF7 Rebirth. I'm getting around to making this video a little bit later in the day than I was planning, so I think we're going to split this shit up, do the Rebirth stuff today, Crisis Core stuff tomorrow, the way it's a little more focused. It's kind of better anyways, instead of trying to cram it all into one video. Plus, I mean, let's be honest, if you come to me and say, David, I have brand new information for Crisis Core Reunion or brand new information for FF7 Rebirth, you can only pick one. I'm picking Rebirth 100% of the time. Anyways, let's get into this shit. So really quickly, we're going to be using the Gamatsu article that's kind of covering this new information. They do have both Crisis Core and Rebirth stuff in this article, but again, we're just looking at the Rebirth stuff for today. Regarding why it is called Rebirth rather than Remake 2, both Remake and Rebirth have a similar meaning of being newly born. Also, if we called it Remake 2, it might give the impression there will be a 3, 4, 5, and so on, as well as that 2 only exists because of 1. This also means that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth can be enjoyed sufficiently on its own. So pretty much this is something we've been talking about for a long time now, that these are standalone games. These are games that you can go to the store and buy separately. You don't need the first one to play the second one. That doesn't negate the possibility of data transfer, right? I don't even know if they touch on that. I haven't read all the Gamatsu translations yet. But just because they're standalone games doesn't mean that they're, you couldn't carry shit over between them. Because of course you can. You could do that with Mass Effect and other games too. As for the name stuff, I mean, several people have already touched on the, the remake, rebirth, kind of being similar things. They, they somewhat mean the same thing. Me personally, I kind of disagree that if you were to call that remake part two, that that would make me think that there's going to be a shit ton of parts. Like, it's based on how much content is going to be in part two. It has nothing to do with the name at all. Like, just how far into the story and the world we go for FF7 with part two... It will tell me how many parts there's going to be. Now, we know there's the trilogy now, but that's all we had to do was play the second one. The reason for the delay in announcing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth was because we were not sure whether it would be a two-part work or trilogy. This is goddamn interesting. For one, the fact that they felt like it was a delay in announcing the next game, I think a sufficient amount of time passed. Don't get me wrong, we were all chomping at the bit and wanting part two news. But it had only been just a little over two years and they, you know, when they revealed and showed us Rebirth. Like I feel like that's enough time, that's a fair amount of time. But it's interesting that they wanted to, I guess, show it sooner, they, but they just weren't sure that there was going to be a trilogy or a two-part. This is interesting, too, because we had, like, a financial investor or something like a year or two ago that was talking about how, with how much time's passed in between the, the different parts of Remake, that they couldn't even afford for it to be more than two parts. Like, they had to make it a two-part game. And it's interesting that they actually, I guess, considered that. I don't know how they would have done it. Like, me personally, I find it hard to believe that they're even going to squeeze, you know, all the way up to the North Crater into the next game. Like, I'm not saying they can't do it, I'm just not sure how they're going to do it. But the fact that they were considering it being a two-part thing for the remake project. Like, they were going to squeeze the rest of the remake story from outside of Midgar and OGFF7 to the very goddamn end and all the new stuff in between and thereafter. I don't know how they'd have done it, dude. That's crazy. Like, I feel like it had to be a trilogy. I don't know what they would have done otherwise. Now, with this part, we don't need to read the whole thing because all it talks about is how whenever a new Final Fantasy game is made, they keep the core members, people like Katase, Namor, whoever, on the project, but they switch out a lot of the staff. But because Remake's been a multi-part series from the very beginning, they've kept the same staff, which is why development's going along smoothly. But we do, however, need to read the last part that says, The fundamental parts are complete and we're currently in mass production stage. Development is going well. Now, when it comes to video game development, I don't know what the fundamental parts are exactly. I assume that's like maybe like the shell of the game. Like maybe they got the baseline of the world developed, but now they actually have to make the game, you know, put assets into the world, stuff like that. The important thing is they're obviously in production. They're making the game. They're not still in like the planning stages. They didn't just put together a little rebirth teaser for us. Like they're actually making the game, which is good. We've already begun work on areas such as the plot and scenario for the third title, which this is not a big deal. We already kind of knew this. They put out those dev messages for the 25th anniversary and they mentioned that one of Nomura Katase, somebody mentioned that. But still, it's cool to get more updates on part three, even though we're not to part two yet. The, before, all we knew is that they're doing some development on part three, but now we know it's scenario and plot. Just as we created Midgar so the fans of the original Final Fantasy VII can appreciate it, we're taking care to develop Rebirth as not to ruin the image that fans have of the original. For that reason, the volume is quite massive. My dude, there's a lot we can break down from this one simple answer, but what's interesting is this is not the only time that they go on to talk about the possible skill of Rebirth, because a couple answers after this to talk about the possibility of whether or not it will or won't be open world, which uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, but the fact that they don't want to ruin what the original FF7 is in the eyes of the fans when it comes to Rebirth would have to mean that they're going to try to replicate the idea, at least, of an overworld, I would think, because that's what original FF7 was. I mean, outside of them completely altering the story, there's really not another way that they could ruin OG FF7 in the eyes of the fans unless they just didn't give us a world to explore to some degree, I feel like. Because once you leave Midgar, that's what it is. You're walking on the world. It's a pretty linear game. You're kind of walking forward the whole time, or the majority of the time, but still, like, we had an overworld. To a certain degree, I think that's what they're kind of touching on, but you could also do a bunch of different things that would piss off fans of the OGFF7. But I think it's also kind of confirming that 
it's going to be the FF7 that you expect. Like, we've been talking about for a while, like, roughly about 90% or so of the FF7 that you know, and they're going to be adding in some new shit, right? New side quests, expanded areas, and then also some straight-up brand new shit, because obviously that's going to happen as well. We hear the concerns of fans asking, can the story really be told in a trilogy, and will it be trimmed down slash a digest version, but it will not be a digest? So it's good to know, right? They're not going to trim anything from the FF7 story. We're probably going to get, again, everything that we really expect from Final Fantasy VII, but with some new shit as well. But on the topic of them potentially trimming shit, they talk about the scale of the game being quite massive, right? And at a certain point, the more stuff you try to put into the game, you're going to have to cut corners somewhere, right? Locations are going to have to suffer, stories are going to have to suffer, side quests are going to have to suffer, something along those lines, right? And if you make the game, the scale of the game a little bit smaller, bring it back a bit, maybe stop the story at an earlier point than you wanted to, you can flesh out the locations more, right? Just an idea. But there's a chance that they, you know, could completely knock out of the fucking park when it comes to Rebirth, which is what we're hoping. As for whether the game will be open world or not, that will be announced with the next information release. So this just further proves that they are paying attention to the discussions amongst the fans, right? They know what the community is asking for. They're, this is a, t- a hot topic. It has been for a long time, whether or not the next game is going to be open world or not. We literally just did a video about the topic of whether or not, you know, Rebirth is going to be open world. So we're not going to spend too much time on it because I would just be repeating myself with the video I did a couple of days ago. But the overwhelming majority of the community wants big zones, right? Big zones to explore. Nobody wants a really open world. You can't even really do traditional open world anyways when it comes to FF7 just because the story spans the globe, right? You travel the entire goddamn planet. There's multiple continents and stuff. So you can't just have free roam exploration regardless, at least not for a while in the story. But the important takeaway from all this, of course, is that the next information release they do, I'm assuming maybe something like a Tokyo Game Show or a State of Play or whatever the case may be, Square Enix Presents, whatever it's going to be, next time they give us some big information for Rebirth, we're going to have the answer finally for what we've been talking about for a couple years now, whether or not this shit's going to be open world. The general systems from Final Fantasy VII Remake will carry over. This, of course, is to be expected. We've been talking about this for a long time, that the other games are going to play relatively the same. There might be additions to combat, additions to exploring the world, traversing the world, stuff like that. But for the most part, the menus, the gameplay, it's all going to be the same. The scene in which Cloud and Sephiroth are walking together in the trailer is a Cloud flashback scene. Duh. <laughs> like I, I don't know much more I can add to that. Like, yeah, we know. Maybe that cleared up some confusion for people, I guess. The main character's 3D models haven't changed. However, some characters have been adjusted, such as Yuffie's model, which we touched up from Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade. This one's a little bit interesting because I don't know why they would change anything at all. Like, why, if all the characters are mostly the same, why would you touch up Yuffie or change Yuffie? What would be changed about her? What would be touched up about her? She was, her model was perfectly fine in Integrade, so I don't know. Kind of weird. But I guess maybe expect to have, like, ever so slight differences with character models when it comes to the next game. I don't know. The focal point of the story hasn't been changed. As for the new mysteries that differ from the original Final Fantasy VII, players of the original will be able to enjoy the game in a new way. The challenge we tackled for this project was how to include those new mysteries without deviating from the original. So pretty much what they did when it comes to Remake. Like, put aside all the brand new shit, all the expanded stuff, all that shit. Put it aside. Remake is 100% faithful to the Midgar segment when it comes to original Final Fantasy VII, right? So, again, expect the same thing when it comes to Rebirth and Beyond. Now, what the new stuff are, I don't know. This kind of goes back to a quote they put out like some years ago where they talked about how they want the remake project to be fun for new fans, but also old fans, so they would be changing stuff along the way. That's kind of what this is saying here, essentially. And this is where things get a bit spicy, my dudes. Regarding game progression, there will be some changes. If while you're playing you think, was this cut, it's because the structure of the story was changed a bit due to the nature of it being a trilogy. Although the order in which you visit some places may change, our policy is essentially not to cut anything. So this is obviously the quote that's kind of making the rounds because they're talking about the possibility of doing things out of order. I don't know what that'd be. I don't know how you'd visit locations out of order unless they alter the layout of the world to a certain degree because make it maybe more realistic because locations are just kind of laid out in front of you. As you're walking forward, you come across the next town, right? Essentially, until you have the freedom to explore and stuff a little bit more. So outside of them maybe moving locations around on the map, like I don't know how you do stuff out of order, but one possibility I've seen people talk about is Wutai. So maybe like once we get to Junon and we get on the cargo ship, we think as OG FF7 fans, we're headed straight to Costa del Sol, but maybe we go somewhere else. Maybe we go to Wutai. Maybe we're hopping on that Shinra cargo ship and they have a mission in Wutai they got to go to. And it's like, oh shit, we're actually going to Wutai now already. Holy fuck, what the hell's going on? Like they can do stuff like that, right? They can switch it up where do things you don't expect, subvert your expectations. But also the fact that they have this policy of not wanting to cut anything means we might just indeed have a little dolphin jump mini game. And for better or worse, I kind of want it. It's exclusive to PlayStation 5 because of the graphical quality, of course, as well as SSD access speed. Since the adventure unfolds in a vast world after the escape from Midgar, loading stress is an extreme bottleneck. We felt we needed the specifications of PlayStation 5 to overcome that and travel the world comfortably. So again, another allusion to the size of the world. 
so Rebirth being on PlayStation 5 only, like that's not a surprise. I know some people are still ill-informed on that. There's some people out there that are wondering if Rebirth was going to be on the PS4, whether or not Integrate is ever going to come to the PS4. And it's like, I'm not trying to like shit on these people that just don't have the correct information. Maybe that's Square Enix's fault. I don't entirely know. But we've known for a while now, more than a year at this point, that Integrate was PS5 only, and that the next game, which we now know to be Rebirth, is going to be PS5 only. And as is to be expected, it's because of the power of the console. Like, even if you're not a fan of the fact that they moved on from the PS4, like, if you want what's best for the remake project, you should be happy that it's PS5 only, because that's just only going to make the game better. But let's not ignore some of the phrases they use, like travel the world comfortably, and adventure unfolds in a vast world after the escape from Midgar. Um, there could be a little bit of play on words, because we are, you know, literally entering a vast world. We're leaving the confinements of Midgar to the world of Gaia. But I do think it's going to be a very big game. Like, not just in terms of the amount of content, but also the size. Because as we know, Hamaguchi, who's like the lead on Rebirth in terms of development is a big fan of Horizon Zero Dawn. We talked about that in the past, so I expect it to be a very big game. But my dudes, thank fucking God who split up this content because this is a long-ass video, and it's just the Rebirth stuff. So if we're trying to cram in all the Crisis Core shit too, like, we'd be here forever. I'd be making this video until probably midnight or later. It's probably best that we did this. Um, definitely covering the Crisis Core stuff tomorrow, 100%, my dudes. A lot to talk about. Lengthy video, so we're going to wrap it up. Just pass off to you guys. We're talking the size of the world, whether or not it's going to be open world, the next big info dump, game progression, possibly doing shit out of order. Things that you really aren't going to expect. That's fantastic, dude. I'm so excited. My dudes, that's the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys aren't today. More Final Fantasy VII Rebirth content. Turn on notifications. Follow me on Twitter. That's I'm a Discord. Links for the notes are in the description. In the outro. Later, guys. I used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I and mean, nobody out here has got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like old train, we in here. Like low game, or leave it. Like old bang.